Hey everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting from Air Venture 2021, it is, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I'm with Scott McFadzine of Diamond Aircraft. We are sitting in this airplane. I'll show you an exterior view. This is the new a DA-50 from Diamond, just freshly flown over from, across the Atlantic from the... Yeah, just across the Atlantic uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. So this is a, a, a new aircraft, although it's appeared a few years ago. I saw it at Aero a few years ago. It has a, a, a new diesel engine from uh, Continental. Scott, what's the plan with this airplane as far as marketing in the U.S. and North America? This is its first appearance. You'll start uh, touring around with it. That's right. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we just crossed the, the North Atlantic there two weeks ago and flew it into the show for its North American debut. So we've announced uh, the U.S. pricing and opened the order book for uh, 2022 positions. So right now we're working on FAA validation of the EASA type certificate and we're expecting that to be received you know sometime in summer so about a year away and uh, deliveries will commence for the second half of the year so we're really excited about that. For the EASA type certificate is complete? It is complete yes. And so that's certified VFR, IFR, day night and Correct. basically everything? It's certified for everything and deliveries will commence in September uh, the first deliveries out of the Austrian facility to European customers. Uh, I, me I meant to ask earlier, is um, de-icing contemplated on this? Yes, we do have full de-ice, so you'll notice the TKS panels on the wings and the vertical and horizontal. Uh, we went with electric prop de-ice for the first time. Uh, our other de-ice aircraft have the TKS uh, sprayer nozzles, so uh, it's a really great prop setup uh, for this aircraft. The dimensions of this airplane, it is basically a DA-62 fuselage and it's got a single engine. Yeah, exactly. It's the, the same fuselage as the DA-62. Uh, the horizontal stable, stabilizer is a bit larger because of the heavier engine up front. Uh, same center section with the retractable gear like we have on the DA-62. And then the outboard, the, the wingspan's 44 feet versus 48 feet on the 62. Obviously the difference is being those engine nacelles that are hanging on the wing of the 62 making up that difference. And how about the aircraft systems? Any differences? Uh, no, we've gone with the Garmin G1000 NXI. You'll notice the, the panel itself is, is identical to the DA62, so transitioning from a 50 to a 62 is very simple. So what do you see as the market appeal uh, for this? It's obviously a less expensive airplane than the DA62. It doesn't have quite the performance in terms of speed? Not quite. Uh, when you look at, uh, it's a CD300, so 300 horsepower on takeoff, but max continuous is 270. Uh, so a little bit slower performance, but you're also enjoying uh, better fuel savings as well. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about this uh, engine, um, CD300 from uh, Continental Aerospace. This is a newly developed uh, V6 engine from Continental. What are some of the uh, technical details on it? Uh, two turbochargers, um, liquid cooled, so again, that you know, no issues with starting hot or cold, um, you know, emergency de descents, not an issue about shock cooling the engine, so FADEC system, uh, like on uh, our DA40, 42, and 62, so single lever throttle, uh, electric rudder trim on the throttle, which is new to us, we've typically had a knob in the center, and we've really went with simplistic uh, automotive controls for the, uh, you know, air conditioning and, uh, yeah. EVS system, so um, we're really happy with the simplicity of the aircraft. It flies like a diamond, you know, you can keep power on right through a stall and have full aileron effectivity through the entire stall. It just, it feels like a diamond, it flies like a diamond, and uh, we're very happy to welcome it to the family. Uh, and the version that we see here, uh, what kind of uh, uh, empty weight and useful load are we talking about? Uh, so depending on options, we're looking at useful load between, uh, you know, 11, 1,100 to 1,250 pounds. Um, and typically, you know, our U.S. customers like all the bells and whistles, so most people do take it with, you know, oxygen, de-ice, air conditioning, you know, all, some of the uh, features that maybe aren't as popular in Europe. So with, uh, if, if a typical... Uh, feature load that you'd expect in the U.S., does that mean it's going to be around 1,100 pounds? 1,150, I would say. Okay, so, uh, and how much fuel are we carrying? Uh, we can carry up to 50 gallons of fuel, mm -hmm. and you're burning anywhere between, you know, in economy, you're burning 9 gallons an hour, uh, max uh, continuous, you'd be burning about 15 gallons an hour. 
the sweet spot, we like to fly at about 75% power. You're burning about 12 gallons an hour fuel, and you're getting about 170 knots airspeed. So if I'm doing this math in my head, it sounds like it's uh, practically a five-person airplane if the people aren't too heavy. That's correct. Yeah, you should be able to fit a full five people in the airplane with full fuel and have no issue. Would this airplane uh, be built in uh, Austria and flown on or over, or what would be built in London, Ontario? So initially, uh, production will be in Austria, and we'll fly them over for the North American market for the 2022 positions. Uh, we're planning to do final assembly in Canada starting in 2023, so we will be building them in the Canadian factory as well. Uh, price points for the North American market? Uh, so base price is 1.15 million US. Uh, fully loaded, probably 1.3, 1.35 in that range. And how does that compare to the current price on the DA62? Uh, so the DA62 is uh, roughly 50 to 70 thousand US dollars more. Um, you know, some some people uh, are curious as to why it's so close, but when you really look at uh, the aircraft, it essentially is a you know a single engine DA62. We just have a 300 horsepower turbo diesel as a paired compared to two 180 horsepower, so 360 versus 300, um, and one prop versus two, really the only difference in cost. So it's really the, di the difference in the price of the extra engine? Uh, pretty much. Well, that's going to be interesting. So if you get out selling this thing, um, and a, a customer is presented with a choice, well, I guess you can't say this yet because you haven't started selling it, but what's going to be the, um, the tipping point? Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing this human experiment and how uh, people compare the 50 to the 62 and ultimately what aircraft they choose. It's it's interesting to, to talk to a lot of customers here at EAA AirVenture and get the U.S. perspective and it's uh, a lot of people love this aircraft. They love the, the size of it, the stability and, and as we know most uh, uh, pilots are, are single engine pilots. A lot of a lot of people haven't done their multi-engine rating that, uh, that we talked to so a lot of them really would like to start in this airplane and maybe at one point move up to a twin if they ever want to get a multi. Well, I, I, I guess we'll know in about a year or 18 months. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll have to touch base then and uh, see how it looks. All right, well, thanks very much, Scott. All right, thanks, Paul. It's Paul Bertarelli reporting from AirVenture 2021 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Thanks for watching.